We're here at the American Society of Clinical Hypnosis annual scientific session and meeting with Dr. David Wark, who, who is a past president of American um, Board. Board of Psychological Hypnosis. <laughs> Thank, <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Dave uh, graciously agreed to answer some questions about uh, boards in uh, clinical hypnosis right and the knowledge that is available and uh, why people want to look into this and so many other interesting pieces of information so first thank you Dave for doing what you're doing for the education in the field of hypnosis you have taught thousands of students you have mm -hmm. done a lot of research you published and uh, it is wonderful to have you and see your passion and uh, desire you. to bring people to a higher level in this wonderful art that all of us love so much. Thank you. Uh, you, you nailed it. That's exactly why I'm here. So the first question, and probably most important, is <coughs> why? Why somebody who has already achieved certification or maybe approved consultancy in clinical hypnosis would want to put him or herself through a rigorous process of obtaining more knowledge and uh, sitting for the exam and uh, um, what's the payoff? What is it? What is it yeah. for a potential diplomat? Okay, those are very appropriate questions and I just came out of a workshop where we tried to answer those questions. Uh, to be really honest, to be really honest, there is no particular financial advantage to being a diplomat of the American Boards of Clinical Hypnosis. But there is an immense personal, psychological, and emotional advantage to it. When we talk to all of the people who are diplomates, they say the experience, the learning, the process of getting deeper and deeper into my profession and applying hypnosis to that profession and learning more about how to do it was wonderful. It's expanding and it's growing and it's, it's a process that I am very pleased to have done. Everybody says that. So I think the takeaway is that emotional charge, that emotional growth that you get from really studying something that's important to you putting time in it, and then working with colleagues to demonstrate how much you've learned. Does that make sense? It is true that the personal achievement is uh, the highest prize in any individual's life. But it's also, is it true that if you do achieve the certification from the board or uh, the, dipl uh, the, diplomat, the status the of the status. diplomat, is it also true that it is a little easier or possibly easier to get a teaching uh, um, position, maybe, or uh, open your own institute. I've heard that. Wow. And also maybe <coughs> um, in a very difficult environment to attract more clients or patients just because of the excellence of your achievement. That may be possible. And to be quite honest, we have heard from people in the past who said, well, it facilitated my getting on a board. Or, yeah, when I went to court to testify, the fact that I was a diplomat gave my testimony a little extra clout. But nowadays, I don't think it makes any difference in income. I don't think it makes an awful lot of difference in entry, uh, in, in opening a practice. I don't think it makes a lot of difference to clients. There are other ways to do that. There are other boards, other certifications that mean much more to the public. And frankly, um, my take is that you don't become a diplomat in order to make money. It you, is true. You do it to make yourself a better person. It is still wonderful that we live in a society where the professional achievement is not only valued on a personal level but also valued by the society that's true that's true that's true and uh, the next um, questions the next question would be about the process it seems a little okay. complicated and especially <coughs> their mentoring program which is very attractive 
the all of the boards, the board, there's a board for medical hypnosis, a board for psychological hypnosis, a board for social work hypnosis, a board for nursing hypnosis. We're all working now together under the American Boards of Clinical Hypnosis to redefine the process, to smooth out the, the issues, to make it easier for people to find mentors, to know what's going, what their examination is going to be, to prepare for the exam, we're trying to be a little more systematic about it. And the mentoring process is one of the things that most people found very, very useful. So I will say that across the boards, the boards will find an applicant, find a mentor for a good candidate. Can you share with us who was your mentor while you were going through the process? <sighs> I talked to Corey Hammond, um, who was very helpful to me. Um, I talked to Dan Cohen, who was a colleague, a physician. And I think my intellectual mentor was probably Steve Lind and Judith Rue, who wrote a book on theories of hypnosis, which was really hot at the time. And I poured myself into that book. <laughs> I never met either of them. But it was a combination of reading and talking to people and getting advice from Corey. Very good. Thank you. And uh, the last point, what, do, what does it involve? Time-wise <coughs> and uh, financial cost-wise? The, the finances, that's, we can talk about that. It depends on the board. Some boards have uh, higher rates than others. The range will be somewhere, I believe, between $100 and $150, $100, maybe $175 to apply, and then there'll be a fee for the, app, for the actual examination. Um, what does it involve? We're trying to develop that right now. We're trying to come up with a correct balance of past and future work, research, theoretical work, clinical application. All the boards are in the process of trying to figure that out. But in general, it's a, a period of study where you review some literature and then preparation where you think about clinical cases. What we're trying to do is help people focus on their professional specialty, whether it's medicine or social work or nursing or dentistry or psychology, and then how does hypnosis augment, add to, contribute, strengthen, build that practice. That's the focus. Thank you, Dave. It seems like your passion and dedication certainly should energize a lot of people to at least ask questions, if not dedicating to this themselves to the process, but at least starting questions and wanting to know even more. So, Dave, um, how an interested professional is going to find more about the resources and information. Well, the easiest way to do it is to go to the ASH website and under the professional tab, click on that and that will open the links to the websites for all of the profession of the uh, diplomat specialty boards. And from there, the world is open. <laughs>